Hi guys, I'm Sarah Wiseman. Today we're talking about the Akashic Records and specifically we're going to talk about a new way of thinking about the records and a new way of accessing them. So before we dive into the Akashic Records, let's just talk about journeying a little bit in general. So what is journeying? Journeying is astral travel or soul travel. And it's actually not something that we have to learn. It's innate to us. As souls, we are journeying all the time. And we do this without even knowing we're doing it. So we all go places when we aren't even trying to. We journey and we astral travel. And we find ourselves in different times and dimensions. And we do this whenever we daydream or we dream, or we meditate, or even if we're on a bike ride, or we're listening to music, or we're driving, all of the other various ways we journey without even trying to journey. And, you know, we often journey unexpectedly where our spirit self leaves our bodies, and we just, what I call, go there. We go there without knowing how we do it. And again, this happens all the time. However, we can also become gifted at intentional journeying, which is when we intentionally detach our soul from our human form and travel into other times and dimensions and realms by intentionally choosing to explore these realms. And again, anyone can do this. It's not hard. It's, it's easy. In fact, it's, it's ridiculously easy because this is, this is who we are. Again, we are conscious, infinite souls, and we're always journeying. Actually, there isn't any time we're not existing in all dimensions all at once. And yet for one brief moment, this moment we call a lifetime, we try to ground ourselves inside a human body and contain ourselves within the confines of a human mind, which is a very small and limited container indeed. But of course, we are so much more than our body or mind, and we are so much more expanded than this. And again, we don't have to try to be expanded it's just who we are. So when we journey, we often go to the Akashic records. So what is this mysterious place? What are the Akashic records? A lot of thoughts about this, but when most people talk about Akashic records, they are referring to the specific portals of an other dimensional state that frequently appears to the soul collective. So a specific portal or specific portals that frequently appear to the soul collective, which means everybody goes to the same places. Everybody's aware of these places. It's within our soul archives or it's within our collective consciousness. So some of these places in the Akashic records that are very common, you've probably been there many times, the white building, the Book of Knowledge, the Library, the Viewing Room, and the Viewing Vista. I'm just going to say those again. The White Building, the Book of Knowledge, the Library, the Viewing Room, and the Viewing Vista. And these are the most common portals that show up for people. And it really, interestingly, it really doesn't matter what background or culture or region or time frame you come from. These portals are held in collective consciousness so that people from all backgrounds are going there. And of course, the Akashic records are not limited to just these places. In fact, everywhere we go in the etheric realms is the Akashic records. And in fact, you might you know, remember that the Akashic records are just yet another name for collective soul, collective consciousness, unified field, the field, universe, divine, God, one, all. 
lot of names for the same ineffable consciousness. So the Akashic Records is another name for the divine realms, and yet um, there are also some specifics that we can work with. So by calling this divine portal the Akashic Records, and by being able to break this concept down, and as you know, that's a lot of my journey has just been, how do we break this down so we can use it? Um, and we can break the Akashic Records into specific portals within a bigger portal, and then it becomes very easy for us to journey in these spaces. So as an example, it can be kind of hard to say to a human, you or me, just go travel in the universe or go journey in the universe. And this is such a vast concept. So how do we do this? Where do we go? It's sort of too big of a container for the mind. However, if we're advised to go visit the book of knowledge, for example, uh, it's easier for our consciousness to find that pathway there. Always in this work, we're attempting to move the brain or the mind, the mind, ego, personality out of the way and let the soul do its work. And so um, the more specifically, like once you go somewhere in this journeying, once you go to a specific place or dimension or portal, you know your way there, you can always go back. Uh, it's just a matter of making that first trip and finding where you are. Our human selves like specific and manageable tasks. And this is why all these apps are so popular, like write down your calories, write down your steps. We like specific, manageable and achievable tasks. And we like these even when we're meditating and journeying. So working in the paradigm of Akashic Records, even though we're really journeying in this vast universe, uh, this can be a really useful tool. So when we talk about the portals we're visiting, what we're talking about is dimensions that souls repeatedly journey to, not just in this time, but in all times, and then come back and report what they've experienced. So these portals have been in collective human consciousness for a very long time, and they've made their way into literature and art and mythology and religion and archaeology and just all of these ways we study our collective history, they are archetypal to our consciousness. We are aware of them as specific places or archetypes in our collective understanding. We know these places as souls, and in fact, all souls know them. You don't have to be a particular person. All of us know these places. Okay, so let's look at some of these common portals and describe what they're like. And you're probably going to have a feeling of resonance or not so much, oh yeah, I've read about that in a book, but more like I've dreamt of that or I know what this is or I've been there. So the first, um, the book of knowledge. Uh, the book of knowledge is a huge book like that contains all the knowledge of you as a soul, and this is every single thing about you in all lifetimes, past, present, and future. Um, for those of you who study astrology, the book of knowledge, you might think of it as it's your chart, but it's your chart in every lifetime. It's the complete chart of you of, as a soul, every little thing that's going to be happening or that has happened or that it is your tendency. So lots of people visualize this, the book of knowledge, as a gigantic book that contains really ornate, colorful pictures and ancient text, almost like a, a book that was scribed by ancient monks with pictures. So when you journey there, you usually can't read the text, but you can relate to it in telepathy. So you see a line of text, you really don't know what it means. And as you attach into it while you're journeying, the meaning just comes into you. you. You understand it without understanding it. And the pictures in the book of knowledge often act as smaller portals that you can enter into. So you see a picture and then you can just drop yourself while journeying into that picture and become transported into the reality that's taking part there. Next, the library. The library contains all the knowledge of the universe 
and it's it's like you've got the book for yourself and then you've got the library which contains all the books of knowledge which is all the books of knowledge on all the souls in existence so many people see the library as a long room with library tables and books shelved floor to ceiling and it may seem difficult to know which book to choose how do you find your book uh, or how do you look at other books and with all of these choices but when you're journeying, a guide will appear to show you or even hand to you the book you're meant to look at. A lot of you have had experiences in visiting bookstores, you know, you're looking for the next step in your journey, in your own personal life journey. You're looking for some guidance and suddenly a book will just kind of fall on the floor in front of you. This is how it kind of works in the library. A guide will show you the book or a book will kind of come out a little bit so you can uh, look at it. So you can access most of the books in the library, but some aren't gonna be available to you. And so my belief is that as souls, we can access what we can understand. And of course, there's much we can't understand yet. So we'll be able to look at those books in other lifetimes. Next, we're going to, so we've got the book of knowledge, we've got the library. Now we're going to the viewing window and this looks a lot like if you've ever been to a zoo where you've got those observational windows and you can watch animals in their habitat. So these windows will stand behind a viewing window and we'll see a scene unfolded from our past or present or future lives or our past or present or future in this lifetime. And we'll often see us put in that scene too. So we're watching a scene or a movie of ourselves at a certain time with whatever guidance we're supposed to understand about that part of our lives. And your guides, of course, will always assist you in working with what you're seeing in the viewing windows or what you are trying to see or what uh, you need to see. Uh, the viewing vista uh, is a really interesting uh, piece to the Akashic Records. Um, the viewing vista is a kind of a vista point on a mountain top or a hill usually that you're shown by a guide. So initially the vista, uh, you're looking out over it and it's usually cloud covered or sort of obscured normally. And then it clears and down below you're seeing a view or a scene below. And sometimes you'll see a scene that immediately answers your question, whatever you're working on. Other times you'll see some kind of village or town or place where people live or habitat area. And sometimes you'll fly with the guide or you're transported into that scene below. For example, your guide might take you from the viewing vista and have you fly down below into a town and you might explore some buildings and meet some other beings there. Um, I found myself, I, I love to work in the viewing vista. And I found that the town or village that it reveals seems to me to be a place of timelessness. It feels, in my own visitation, it feels both ancient and futuristic, familiar and new. Um, I kind of tend to visit a village that looks sort of like, sort of like ancient Egypt, but if you threw in Star Wars. So inside this magical town, there's all kinds of magical futuristic things. I see cups with bubbling liquid or magical wands or flying objects and a lot of things that I don't know what they are because in this life I haven't, lifetime I haven't seen them yet. It's a futuristic view, but as if my soul has lived there many times. And in your own journey, you're gonna find this, uh, often you'll go into you know, we think we always go into past lives, but we often go into future lives too. We're infinite souls. We are not limited to one dimension or one time dimension. So remembering your soul self. And there's this idea in new age work or this kind of mystical work of remembering who you are or remembering your true self as the secret to accessing the expanded nature that is you. And I think this is a really good way to think about it. We remember our essence. 
there's also this idea that we want to shed the layers of who we're not. And I think this is also a really great thing. It's like we just keep shedding all the things we're not until we are left with that, that essence, who we are. Remembering or just letting go of everything. So that is what was revealed. And, you know, once you decide this is what you want to do, and here the intentionality is really the key. It's very easy to exist as consciousness without being limited by body or mind. And you can do this right now. Anyone can. You just, a uh, very easy way is you just so, close your eyes. You breathe. You relax. And you just go there to this other dimension where you know yourself as soul self without ego, mind, personality, body, cares of the world. You're just in a different dimensionality. And then you can come back. And so you can just enter in and come back very, very quickly. This is who we are. It's not hard. So many people don't believe this is possible. So you kind of have to trick the body and mind a little bit into relaxing and kind of getting out of the way. Um, so if, if you're familiar at all, or maybe this is the first time you've come across what I work in. Uh, so I don't really teach traditional meditation. I think it's a great practice, but I learned from what I've directly experienced in my own experimentation with journeying and with discovering what is available in journeying. And so again, I use this very modern fast way of entering in, you know, you just enter into meditative trance for spiritual journeying. And it seems to be a very easy way for people with a modern westernized mind to use. Um, going there is not really something that's foreign to us you're just something we're already, it's something we're already doing. And uh, we're just practicing remembering. We can enter in, go to the different space. We can just come back and we can actually do this with our eyes open. And we can come back. Um, obviously, I'm not going in very deeply. I'm just going to that precipice of going into trance. But I'm just saying that it's not a hard thing. You can just practice this. Enter in, come back, enter in, come back. So when you do journey into the Akashic Records, which I hope you do, um, you'll find that some of the portals are already known to you. You're very familiar with them. And then some are really going to be new to you, which is very exciting and very interesting to try something in a different way. There are always as many ways to journey in the divine realms as there are souls in the universe. And my greatest wish is that you find these experiences to be useful to you now and long into the future. If you want to know more specifically about how to work with the Akashic Records, this is just but a little introduction. You can go to sarahweisman.com and then go to courses and look for uh, the Akashic Project. Thanks for listening.